Okay. We're going to be going through a few normal distribution questions. These four questions come from the review sheet that is posted on the blog in order to help you prepare for the quiz on the normal distribution that we have coming up. Question number one. 300 contestants enter a swimming competition. The 60 contestants with the fastest times go through to the semifinals. Calculate the percentage who go through to the semifinals. Right, well we've got then 60 of our 300 contestants did get through to the semifinals. Let's convert this into a percentage. So we'll do 60 divided by 300 and that's equal to 0 0.2. And we know that 0.2 expresses a percentage is 20%. And so we're really looking then for the fastest 20% of the swimmers. And when we're talking about the fastest 20%, we're talking about the 20% that have the quickest times. That is to say the lowest times because they've covered the swimming distance in less time than the slower competitors. The times are approximately normally distributed with a mean of 204 seconds and a standard deviation of 6 seconds. Part B asks us to represent this information on a normal distribution graph. So, there's my normal curve. It's not very symmetric, but it's just a sketch. We're supposed to clearly indicate the mean, which is at 204, and I'm just going to label my axis swim times. It's always a good idea to label your axis and to give the unit, in this case, seconds. And because our standard deviation is 6, well then we could show sort of I'm going up by 6, that's 210, that's 216, that's 222, and in the other direction the increments of 6 are 198, 192, 186, and so on. It also wants us to indicate clearly the percentage who reach the semifinals. These are going to be the competitors who have the lower or faster times. And so let's suppose that the bottom 20%, I'm estimating here, it's just a sketch, is about this much. These are the fastest 20% of the swimmers, and I'll just indicate that the area of that region is 20%, or 0 0.2 if you prefer. Part C. Calculate the time of the slowest contestant to reach the semifinals. So these are all of the contestants who reached the semifinals. These are the ones who came in in the even smaller or faster times. And so this cutoff right here must represent the time of the slowest contestant who still was a part of the qualifying 20%. So I'm just going to get rid of this 198 so that I can... Uh, have room to put in a k value right here. And so if this cutoff right here is k, then we're really looking for the probability that my swim time is less than or equal to k, k being my cutoff for qualifying for the semifinal. I know that the area of that probability region is 0 0.2. Because you've been given the percentage or the probability and you're looking for the swim time, that's when we use the inverse norm. And so we're trying to find the inverse norm of 0 0.2, and then our mean is 200 and, oops, 204, and our standard deviation is 6. So let's type this information into the calculator. Second vars, oops, sorry, let's try that again second vars, and we'll go into option 3, inverse norm, and we've got a percentage of 20% or 0 0.2, because you should write it into inverse norm as a decimal, and then the mean after the comma is 204, comma, standard deviation is 6. And it gives us 198.95 and we would normally round that off to three significant figures, which is 199 seconds. So if you swam in 199 seconds or less, that is to say, or faster, then you were in the top 20% and you qualified for the semifinals. Let's go on to question number two. 
A set of 1,000 test scores is normally distributed with a mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 10. Part A, calculate the probability which is represented by each of the following diagrams, giving your answers to three decimal places. So here's our mean of 75, and I know that if my standard deviation is 10, then I'm going up by 10 each time. Now you might remember then that this region is 34.13%. This one right here, you might remember, is 13.59%. And then we've got 85, 95, then we've got 105. You might remember that this one is 2.15%, and that this one is 0.13%. And so our shaded region is the sum of 2.15 plus 0.13%, and that gives you 2.28%. Another way you could have done this problem would have been to use your calculator. Because we are looking for a probability, then we will just go straight into normal CDF. And the left bound, the lower cutoff of that shaded region, is 95. The upper bound, or the rightmost point, it keeps going to the right forever, to positive infinity. One way that I can write that is by saying 1 times 10 to the power of, so I've just done second comma to get this capital E, which represents times 10 to the power of. Now I'll go 10 to the power of 99. That's a huge number. It's a 1 followed by 99 zeros. If you would prefer to type in 1 million here instead, you're probably still going to be okay. But uh, that's the biggest number that our calculator can handle, is 1E99. And then we have to put in our mean of 75 and our standard deviation of 10. And let's see what it gives us. That's a probability of 0.0228, if I round it off. So 0.02275, which rounds to, well, uh, sorry, let's do the rounding first. I'll convert it into a percent in a minute. To three significant figures, 228. And I think you can see that that's the same thing as the 2.28% that I got from my percentages. So if you want to use the percentages that you've memorized, great. And in this particular example, we could also use the calculator to come up with the same answer to 3 sig fig. All right, the second problem. We've now got our one standard deviation below the mean is 65. And so there's the mean at 75. And then we've got our one standard deviation above and etc. Uh, I know that this region is 34.13%. And this is also 34.13%. This one is 13.59%. This one is 2.15%. And there's another little one that comes all the way out here, a really tiny one. And that one is 0.13%. So if I added all of these percentages that have been shaded together, 34.13 plus 34.13 plus 13.59 plus 2.15 plus 0.13. All right, let's do that on the calculator then. So 34.13 plus 34.13 plus 13.59 plus 2.15 plus 0.13 gives us a total of 84.13%. Another way that we could have done this problem in this case is by using the calculator. So because we are being asked for a probability, we will use normal CDF. Again, if they gave you the probability, then you would use inverse norm. But when you're looking for the probability, we'll go normal CDF. Here your left bound is 65. Your upper bound, you could put in 1 million if you wanted, but I'm going to put in the highest number possible on the calculator, which is 1 second comma to get the E, which stands for times 10 to the power of 99, so a 1 followed by 99 zeros, much bigger than 1 million, the closest my calculator can get to positive infinity. And then again, I've got mean of 75 and a standard deviation of 10, and it will tell us uh, an answer of 0 0.8413, 
and if I uh, if I round that off to it says to three decimal places, doesn't it? And so that will round off then to 0 0.841. And the percentage that I got, if I expressed it as a decimal, is of course 0 0.841 also, uh, if I rounded it to three significant figures. And so if you express it as a probability as a decimal with three decimal places, it doesn't matter whether you use the sum of the percentages method that you memorized or whether you use your calculator, but you should be familiar with both methods. All right, now we're looking for in between 65 and 95. Well, we could use the method of adding together the different percentages. I know that this one's 34.13, 34.13, and 13.59. So if we added those together, Thirty-four point one three plus thirty-four point one three plus thirteen point five nine gives you a total of eighty-one point eight five percent. And if I round that to three significant figures, I get eighty-one point nine percent. And if I express that as a decimal, it's zero point eight one nine to three decimal places. Another way you could have done it is using normal CDF. So we could have said normal CDF going from 65 up to 95, where our mean is 75 and our standard deviation is 10. Let's see what that gives us. So second VARS normal CDF. My lower bound is 65. My upper bound is 95. My mean is 75. And my standard deviation is 10. And look, it gives you the exact same answer when you round to three significant figures of 0 0.819. So either method is available to you in this problem. Out of the thousand students, how many received test results higher than 87? So now on your normal distribution curve, which has got a mean at 75, we're now looking for the amount that got higher than 87. And so on your calculator, we can do the normal CDF, starting from a left bound, a lower bound of 87, going up to a huge number, like 1 million, but I'm going to make it even bigger. Instead of six zeros, I'll go 99 zeros using this E notation. And then 75 is the mean, and 10 is your standard deviation. A clever trick that you can do on your calculator is just to bring up the last function that you had. We can say second enter, and it'll bring up the last thing that you typed. All we have to do is make a couple of changes to these values. And so we're starting then from 87, and we're going up to, uh, let me just insert then in one second e. 99. And uh, I'm good to go. Tells us that the probability, rounded to three significant figures, is 0 0.115.